grief. <laughs> what a what a chore to get this thing connected this morning. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A little bit of a delay here between my boxers letting me know they had to go to the bathroom before I started with this. And it's better for me to spend an extra couple minutes with them so that way I can hopefully get through this without them distracting me, taking my attention away from my message this morning. Uh, in case you've been wondering where I've been and not been uh, paying attention as to where I've been and what I've done, took a road trip and uh, took two of my sons on the road with me. Now we have an RV and two weeks ago, I thought to myself, looking at price action, I said, you know, I really can't connect with it right now. So to control the impulsiveness that I would have if I were given the opportunity to sit here and try to look at certain things when I knew the probabilities were low, uh, the tendency I have as an obsessively compulsive person, I wrestle with a lot of impulsiveness. And it may sound like I am a saint with patience. I'm not. Uh, it takes a great deal of discipline for me to do what you see me do and to manage my own internal dialogue. It's like arguing with a thousand different people and all of them have their own opinion and they all think they're right. And it, it's very hard to articulate it, but um, a mental illness is very hard to live with. It's hard for people to live with you. And it's very difficult to operate in an industry like this where it requires you to be extremely focused and have no distractions. So to stave off that impulsiveness, I took a leave of absence and channeled that energy that would otherwise be utilized in markets that I knew by experience and by the rules that I teach you was going to be highly unfavorable. Now, does that mean that the market stayed sideways and didn't move at all? There was no fluctuations at all? No, of course not. But I think you all know, now looking back at it, it was a little bit more trickier than it has been in recent months. And it's unfortunate for some of you that have pushed the envelope too much, trying to get your funded accounts and or make more money or try to keep up with the Joneses, as the expression says. Uh, meaning in America, if you're not familiar with that term, it's kind of like keeping up with everybody else that's doing better or pretending to be doing better. So if, if someone gets a car, you try to get a car that's like theirs or better than you know, that type of thing. As a individual with a internal chip on my shoulder where I feel like I have to prove something all the time, uh, and that's rooted in my childhood, I can't get my grandfather's approval because he basically raised me, I do a lot of things impulsively and I'm trying to garner something I can't obtain. So it's very difficult for me to have that impulsiveness in a market environment where I'm not obligated to sit in front of you. You know, I like, I like to remind you all that, like I'm not obligated to spend my time with you. Um, and I don't mean that to be condescending what i'm saying is is i don't have any obligation to any of you but i enjoy doing it and because i don't run a signal service and i facetiously made a, a comment to my older students in private um, stating that i'm so thankful that i'm not running a signal service in an environment like this where you're expected you're you're held to this standard of you have to do this you know We've come to you for these signals and you're not doing it. So you're not meeting your end of the bargain, so to speak, because it's very difficult right now. And that's also another reason why I'm glad I don't have a, you know, ironclad schedule for live streaming. That's Bella letting me know. <laughs> she wants back in. Hold on one second. The joys of doing these things live. These are all things that would actually happen when I'm doing recordings. You don't get the uh, inside track because I'm editing them out. 
And you're probably saying, well, what about that woman you're married to, ICT? Why ain't you got her doing that? Well, she's out. <laughs> she's doing her thing. So it's me and the girls here. So that's where I've been. And in case you haven't already picked up on where I've mentioned I was, we have an RV. I told my sons, two of them, I said, let's go on a trip. Let's hang out, have a little bit of a men's retreat and just you know, connect. That way I can take my mind away from the markets, take my mind away from all of you, because it's good for us to be a, you know, apart for some time. It's good because absence makes the heart grow fonder. And you probably miss me, you know, as much as much as I missed you. And truth be told, I was really wanting to do a lot of these when I was over the road. And I thought to myself, it's actually better. It's better for you to endure this without me because it's kind of like a reminder that after November, it's going to be like that. And it's not to be afraid or not for you to be afraid of or grow anxious about. It's something to be excited about because you're going to venture into this all by yourself. And right now you may not feel like you're equipped for it. That's okay. You will be. But ICT, we've lost a lot of April. It's okay. It's okay. You've learned a valuable lesson because I practiced what I preached. I did exactly what I teach and taught you in these lessons, in those lectures, in those core content lessons that are on my mentorship videos on my YouTube channel. My long-term older students know that these times can be wearing. They can wear you down, grind you down into bits. And if you're a new trader or a developing trader, these things can be major barriers to development or even willingness to stay with it. So I, I allowed for that to happen because I could have very easily been speaking to you through my Bose headset while I was driving, hands-free, completely legal in every state. But I went to uh, South Carolina and I spent a day and a half. And I thought to myself, yeah, this is good down to Florida. And while I was diving down to Florida, I got to thinking, I'm quite certain that many of you, not all of you, but many of you, were probably thinking to yourself, why does it feel so much harder right now? Like, why does it feel like I can't find a setup that makes sense? Or why is the setups that I'm trying to get into, why are they not performing for me? What's different about this environment? Or what's, what's different about the algorithm? Did it change? Did something happen? Did too many people learn it now? <laughs> no, there are sometimes the market will go into periods where it just simply has to stay put, has to stay basically sideways. And when it does that, when it's in no immediate hurry to get anywhere, it's just going to grind sideways. Now, it's not going to draw a horizontal line. It's going to move and gyrate a little bit here, a little bit there. You'll see fluctuations during the, the times of the day that we look for, but they just won't be as clean. They won't be so trustworthy. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Now, there's times where I can see setups in this sloppiness and still fare it out and move here and there. They won't be the 25 handle, 30 handle, 50 handle runs that you've seen me do, and they won't be always a 20 handle run. In fact, recently, even 10 handle runs have been not as frequent. Now, right away, I know some of you that are trading, you'll bring out your report card that you've been doing while it's gone and say, but look at this ICT. You're being too hard on yourself. The model speaks, the, the algorithm's still working. I did this, I did that. That's fine. That's your trade. That's your setup. I'm speaking to the individuals that didn't do it that need the encouragement, that this need to be recentered and recalibrated because one or two days of not being able to find your footing, that's reasonable for a new trader. They think that's something that's within the realm of permissible. But a new trader, a new developing trader, they can't come to terms with the idea that a trading model or an approach to trading or a mindset about price action should not be two weeks, if not longer, 
there should be trades taken. Someone must be pushing a button somewhere and they want to be in that group, that mindset, that approach of always being in something. And that's an unfortunate thing because there is a time to sow and a time to reap. There's going to be times when you get into the marketplace and you may not be able to foresee it. Like I was able to show you after two days sitting on Twitter and pointing out points of reference where I thought that were noteworthy uh, two weeks ago or so. And right away, I knew that I was out of sync and I wasn't able to connect. And that was number one, I kind of anticipated it because I told everybody we were in a scalper's market anyway. But even if we're in a scalper's market, you know, I'm proficient enough. I can get in there and slice and dice and do these small little type of price action moves. But you're not going to be impressed with two, three, four handles or less a couple times a day. Now, some of you might lie to yourself and say, well, no, 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 ICT, <laughs> that's right up my alley. That's exactly what I want to do. You don't trust me. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And the reason why you don't want to do that, and I can speak so confidently about it because you'll start doing the math and think to yourself, well, wait a minute now. I can do two handles, three handles, less than four handles, 20, 30 times a, a day. Because look, it, look it, it's moving like that all the time. And then you'll think more is better, whereas less is more. Less is optimal. Less trade frequency. When you're new, you do not want to be placing yourself in conditions and in opportunities and I say that term opportunities loosely, and I'm doing quotes in the air with my fingers right now. You want to limit that in the beginning. It doesn't sound productive to do that because it's going to feel like you want to be doing this. Well, day trading must be every day trading, and it's not, not high probability it isn't. Now, you can get in there and get lucky and attribute it to this. A skillful trader navigating the treacherous waters of these markets. That's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own imagination. But I'm trying to be practical and responsible as an educator to you, the listener, that doesn't know the, yourself yet. You came into this industry, this venture, listening to me drone on about things that probably should have been said in less words. But the more words, the better. Because I'm hammering down these principles, and for the people that are really prepared to want to learn, they're willing to sit through it and listen. Those that have done that, you see them doing exceedingly well. The industries recognize them now. They're, they're making themselves known because of their results. They're not there bragging. But some of you want to be just a fraction of what they're finding in terms of success. Even that fraction requires a great deal of discipline and you have to know yourself and you have to know where you're likely to do damage to yourself where are you going to hurt yourself in the beginning everything everything has thorns and sharp edges every single thing out there is too hot to touch so you have to wear protection and the protection that i'm offering you is experience and sometimes that experience isn't always fully appreciated by the masses because they want me to do certain things. They want me to perform tricks. They want me to do things that I'm not obligated to do. And I don't like being told what to do. And when I know my personal limitations as a man, as a person that suffers with mental illness, I know where I can get myself into trouble doing things as a 20 year old, trying to prove something. And I had very, very good tools, some that you aren't privy to and won't be privy to, and others I'm teaching you throughout this year. I could still go in there and navigate, but it would be completely diametrically opposed to the model I've introduced. I, I saw a, a statement the other day. Um, I said, for you, okay, you, you wait for the silver bullet. That means you wait for a setup between 10 and 11 Eastern time, New York local time. That doesn't mean I have to. And I did a 20 hour run from Florida in an RV 
with only four stops. And they were just bathroom trips for my dog and gas. And I just want to break this up real quick and throw this in here. We stopped in a gas station in South Carolina on the way back. And it was real close to the North Carolina border. And I, I have to look at my receipt to see exactly where it was. But I, I pulled off 95 North. And it was one of those things right out of a movie. Like I pulled in and there was only two gas stations, one across the street from the other. And there was like these low rundown looking motels or hotels or whatever you want to call it. And it just looked like I was in a really bad area. But I needed gas. So I pulled in. And no sooner I got there, this car swoops in once I put the gas pump in, started pumping it. I'm doing a walk around in my RV and looking, making sure everything, the tires are good. There's nothing happened, you know, on the trip that far from where I left from Florida. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy's coming here really fast. Sure enough, he pulls up real quick to me. And it looks like two meth heads. Okay. And I'm not trying to be funny. This is not trying to be, you know, like a, a, a comedy bit here. I could smell their body odor with the windows down. And the guy that was in the passenger seat looked like he was dead. And the guy that was driving was toothless. They looked like they haven't been bathed in, in weeks. And the guy says, hey, hey, buddy, I saw that uh, your tag says you're from Maryland. And I really need some money for a hotel room. Can you help me out? Now, I, I don't carry cash. And I said to him, I said, I, I'm not sure how I could help you. I said, but... Um, I don't have any money to, to it's, you know, if I had cash, I would, I would obviously I'll give it to you, but I don't have it. And the look in his face was like, what? And he looked over my shoulder and saw the RV. So naturally, you know, you're looking at this $300,000 RV and I'm telling him, I don't have anything to give him. So as I'm looking at him, I see movement out of my right eye in the corner. And this guy's walking up real, real suspicious. He's got a, a cell phone to his ear. And he's looking around both directions as he's walking towards where we are. Now, my sons are in the RV. They're not aware of this. Okay. One of them sleeping, the older one. And the youngest, he's, he's not going to be any help of anything. And he's distracted with his little handheld you know, games. So I'm thinking to myself, I am in a situation here. And usually I have a friend that shoots freedom seeds all over the place. And I don't have that with me here. And I'm looking around and thinking to myself, okay, my pump is in the RV. It's pumping. I don't even have $20, I'm sure, pumped into the RV yet. I'm looking around. This guy's looking for someone else. You just know you know you're in a situation. The car that drove up to me was the distraction. The guy that was coming to my right, he was on the side of the, I guess, the, the store part of where the gas station is, I didn't notice him when I pulled in. I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking, I got to get my RV in here without hitting anybody else's car, move my RV up. I have to take up two spots. It's so long and not hurt anything in the, in the general area. But he came from generally the side of that building. Now, was he around the corner or was he leaning against the wall? I don't know that much, but the point is this. And you're probably saying, what the hell does this have to do with anything? I got to get off my chest because <laughs> it's been irking me. And I, to say it in a tweet wouldn't be sufficient enough for me. So it's like a itch I got to scratch. So the guy saying, look, are you sure you can't do anything for me, man? You, I, I see you're from Maryland. I'm like, I, I understand my tag says Maryland, but I've also explained to you, but I'm talking to you know, him without looking at him now. So I'm panning over his roof of his car and there's a car coming down. And there's not a lot of traffic in this area. Me, the RV. This older gentleman in a pickup truck and what looked like you know, young kids were leaving the gas station in their car. That was it. Just me, this older guy that's two rows down. He can't see what's going on. He wouldn't be much help anyway if something broke out. But this car comes cruising down the road. And I see the, the attention of the gentleman that's coming from the right side. His eyes are fixed on that car. So I know right away. They're in connection. He comes flying in, pulls up right behind my RV, and he's looking at me. Doesn't say anything. He's just looking at me. 
So I have my hand and I put it underneath my hoodie like I have something. And I knock on the RV, I back up against the RV, I knock on it. Like I'm letting the occupants in my RV know that it's it's time to go. Like it's time to get what you got, bring your heaters and let's go because we're lighting this area up. Now that's all pantomime. I have nothing on me. I have nothing in my RV because I don't want to get caught in a state where, you know, so anything can happen today. And I'm not trying to go answer for something that we're licensed by the Constitution to do anyway. But some states like to believe that we aren't. And if anything this offends you, if you don't agree with the Second Amendment, then uh, you can unfollow me because I don't care. But the point is this. As soon as I knocked on the RV, the joker in the car rolled out immediately. The other guy changed directions and walked into the store, and the two guys in the car peeled off. Now, what's the chances? What's the chances of all that happening? And they're all not in concert with one another. They're not together. Dude, listen. It's getting wild out there. And if you are looking like you have something to take, if you have money on you or potentially something to steal, I thought to myself, as because I, I stopped the pump there. I had $37. I said, I, I'm not staying here. I got to get out of this here. I'll go up into North Carolina and pull off into one of the you know, the, the bigger well-known trucking stops and where I can be seen by other people. When I got rolling again, I started to think to myself, you know, that could have been bad. Like I could have been held up there. Not that it could have got anything from me. I mean, but what happens if they would have at gunpoint told me to give the RV to them? And maybe they didn't let me take my kids out of the RV. You know, that that was that was what was going through my mind. And I was troubled. Like I was really thinking in another instance, someone else in that same predicament. What would have happened? Like there's you're no nobody's going to convince me that that wasn't set up. They're waiting for people to come into this gas station. It's low traffic. It's in a seedy area. And it's it, it's a getaway right there. They can jump on the exit ramp to 95 South or 95 North and be gone. And when they peeled out, they had no tag. No tag. A gray Saturn that had all kinds of body damage. What would you have done in that situation? I'm thankful that I had the unction to think, you well, know, let me back up to the RV and knock on it. And as soon as I did that, it was just like, that was the cue for them. Okay, it's time to go. Like it was all of them, all of them at one time did exactly the same thing. Cut, let's go. What happens in that, ladies? Listen, I understand there's this idea about what gender is and what gender ain't. But imagine it was you. Man, imagine if it was you and your pocketbook was sitting in the front seat of your car. Where many times my wife does that very thing and I yell at her all the time. And you can get upset with me all about that as, as much as you want. But she does these stupid things that offers up opportunity. Sometimes she leaves her pocketbook on the floorboard of the passenger seat, enticing what? The wind to get broken, to get a pocketbook. Right now, today, you need to start thinking about those things. Because now I'm really thinking about how even some of the things that I do open up an opportunity. People are getting desperate. People are getting unhinged. and Crime is becoming organized in a way that it's a little unsettling. You see all these people running around going and tearing up places and stealing stuff. Bet you never thought about getting robbed at a gas station, did you? I know I never. It never even crossed my mind. Never one time during the entire trip I was enjoying everything until that moment. And the rest of the trip, I was like, you know, that's that's not going to happen. And that was the fuel that kept me going because otherwise I was going to stop a little bit above midpoint in North Carolina and bed down there. But I, I, I couldn't rest. I was thinking to myself how bad that could have turned out. So 
I just tossed it in there as a public announcement that's kind of like keep your head on a swivel, look around, be be aware, don't be a zombie staring at your cell phone, walking in public or or open up an opportunity because you know, things could have turned around differently and I, I may not have been able to sit with you. Imagine like the worst could have happened in that environment. And some of you think, oh, you know, you're being you know, dramatic. Listen, you weren't there. And exactly what I described is exactly how it unfolded. What's the chances of those four people all doing the same thing just because I backed up against the RV and knocked on it real hard? Guess what that means? That's a big ass RV. They don't know how many people were in there. And they don't know what we have. But it was a bluff. I had nothing in there. A tire thumper that I did not have on me. I was in flip flops and literally in the most ill prepared situation ever. But I pantomimed like I had something and they bought it. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Because if anything would have happened, I'm not confident that I could have done very much with four people. Not in, not in the position I was in. No, <laughs> that's sorry. I, I mean, it, you just you wouldn't be able to do anything with that situation. One was a lookout. One was a, a distraction. And they knew that I couldn't move my RV with that car behind me, because I literally had to back out swing around to get myself out of there it's 38 feet long so it's not it's like an airplane without wings on the ground it's 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 pretty big but just be aware okay so i know i probably spent more time on this than you wanted to hear about it but when you're young you, you think you're invincible oh this is something that you know women and old people have to worry about uh, no you need to be aware of it now because things are getting nuts so it's not just about making money. It's about making sure you're staying healthy and, and safe. I mean, that's how I, hand, I end it all the time. Now, when things started getting nuts, that's how I end it. It used to be good luck with trading. I always say be safe. I want you to be safe. Now, I know that there's a more impactful message behind it because I could have ended up in a potluck that could have changed everything and over something stupid. You know, I picked the wrong place to get gas at, you know. But anyway, the, t the topic of this one here with that long monologue out of the way, if you stayed through it, congratulations, you did well. <laughs> but the, uh, the title is Equity Concerns When Your Heavens Are Like Brass. What does that even mean? Well, there's a, there's a passage in Deuteronomy, and no, I'm not going to be preaching to you today in case you're wondering atheists. The passage is about how through either disobedience or not, you know, adhering to the instructions or living a life that is unpleasing. When you ask for help and you send a prayer, it doesn't sound like it's getting answered. Okay. So it feels like your heavens are like brass. Your, your, your prayer can't get through and your field or the ground that you're on is like iron. So you can't plant or harvest anything. So you're stuck. You're stuck right there when it feels like you can't do anything. You don't know what to do. And as a trader, what are we doing? We're trying to increase that equity curve. Trying to prevent it from declining. And for new students, trying to never have a losing trade. <laughs> and that's never going to happen. You're going to have a losing trade. The harder you work towards not getting a losing trade, the easier you're going to find one. Think about that because that's the truth. The more things you try to hunt and research and try to find or try to trade in a way where you think you're never going to take a loss, they will come to you far easier if you were just to trade and accept the responsibilities of the risk and controlling that only. Staying within your model's rules. So how does this equate to anything? You know, What do we do with this message here? Well, your equity concern is you want to try to make money. You want to make the equity curve go up and you want to go higher. You want to go higher on a leaderboard in the competition. You want to get a funded account challenge passed. You want to be able to get a certain payout. 
you want to be able to reach a equity high mile marker to be able to tell yourself that you can do this, show the, uh, the universe on social media that you aren't a demo baller. You know, all these things are contributing factors for you to make that equity curve go up. But what happens when the market says no? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when the market is not showing you that it's a time for you to plant in risk? Because trading is planting in risk. You don't know, just like a farmer doesn't know, if that crop is going to yield anything. Think about it. They don't know. They're just doing the same thing they do all the time. They have a routine. They have a model. Their model is at this time of year, right away, what does that talk about? Are they planting their corn, their wheat, their soybean, their oats, their okra, the potatoes, or potato, in deference to folks that want to say it that way? Do they plant that in December? Do they plant it when it's likely to frost and freeze? No. Their model begins with time. Well, there's a time to do everything, but not everything on that time. So a farmer knows there's a certain time. His model as a farmer, he's supposed to do something. And outside that time, he is not to do anything. And he is not upset about that because he is following his model or her model. You don't want to have this impulsiveness as a farmer to try to get ahead and plant before you're supposed to. And you don't want to be late. So the first emphasis is on time. That's exactly how I teach you how to read price action. The first ingredient to high probability is time. Is it time to do anything? Now, I mentioned through that daily chart that we were in that range, and until we left it, we were in a scalper's market. And that means that you have to be very, very nimble on a one or five minute chart and try not to have these expectations to hold for the full daily range. There's a time for that. We weren't in it. And that's why you saw this stagnant little choppy ranges where we would see a flutter here and there, sometimes 10 handles, maybe, maybe 15, but it was an, an erratic price delivery. And as a new student, I know that you don't have that skill set. You want it so badly, you want to be able to do it right now. And it's already a year late. That's the move. That's the mentality and the motivation that you have as a new student. I understand that. That's exactly how I was. I wanted to figure it all out faster than I did. But you can't speed it up. And when I gave you the insight that we're in this range, it's not high probability, so you have to be careful. And then I showed, not because of anything more except for me, wanting to tell you on that Monday or Tuesday, two weeks ago on Twitter, what levels I was looking for, the market was not interested in that. The things that I wanted to see on the high end or the low end, it was not interested in. So that told me immediately, unless something changes overnight, Tuesday of two weeks ago, in the Wednesday morning, I'm not touching it. So I had set plans in motion that if I have no interest in it, what am I going to do? Because I already know the impulsiveness, the human aspect to me, the frailty of emotions, the psychological effects of wanting to show you will still be there, which is why I said, I have the best tools in trading. I have the best models in trading. And if I'm trading in the optimal time, there is nobody that's going to trade better than me. That's not ego. That's the facts. You will experience that too. But if I am left to my own devices as a human being with mental illness, 
where I always feel like I have to prove myself and people like to play counselor to me. Why do you do this? Don't ask me. I don't know why, <laughs> okay? But I have to. I'm a dog chasing cars and you're not gonna fix me. A lot of people have tried good hearted attempts, but that won't work with me. It doesn't work. In fact, it, and frankly, it pisses me off. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't like when someone tries to mother me. Now, I know a lot of you guys like to see me as a father figure. That's cool, but I'm just trying to be a voice of reason. And if I don't follow my own rules, I can blow it just as easily as someone brand new. It takes a great deal of effort on my part to stay disciplined. I always want to moonwalk on the grass that says don't walk on it. I always want to do that. When someone says don't do something, I already have a dozen ways I'm going to do it. Now, we kind of define that as a Christian, as a sinner. <laughs> I am a sinner, and I have to repent every single day, multiple times, because the things that I want to do, the things I think about wanting to do, um, it's not something that I would be proud of. And you probably wouldn't ever hear that from a mentor anywhere else. But I'm real. I'm practical, even though sometimes I seem impractical to most people. So I have to remove myself from that enticement. Because if I don't do that, I'm left to my own devices. And then I would be in a position where I knew I would be in a trade where I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't be in that market. I shouldn't be in the market. You knew better, ICT. Why are you doing this? Well, because I have something to prove. To who? Whoever will listen. That's the humanity in me that I wrestle with all the time. And for some of you younger folks, generally the young men, you have this same thing inside you. And you want to get really, really good at this. So that way you can go out there and stick your thumb in everybody's eye that didn't have a problem with you. You'll create that audience because you feel like you have to do it. It's something inside of you that you can't cope with. And your coping mechanism is you want to do that because then you'll feel like, you know, a gladiator. That's not why I do what I do. I do it because I want to hear my grandfather tell me, you done well. I'm proud of you. And there's a lot of things I've done over the years as an educator and a teacher that I'm not proud of. And I know that if he was able to see me and had seen what I've done or said some of the things I've said through ego, he would tell me that wasn't something that I would be proud of or he would be proud of, which would scar me. But left to my own devices over the last two weeks, I would have easily had an extremely low strike rate. And I'm, I talked to uh, Tom Hugard in private here and there, and I told him, I said, I would have had about 12% strike rate. If we were being honest and we were sitting at a, a pub, not that I go to anything like that, but we were just hanging out, he and I, I told him, I said, I, I think honestly, Knowing myself, I would have had about a 12% strike rate, which would have been abysmal, hard. But me knowing me, knowing my tendencies, knowing how I'm going to interpret the climate, the environment, the ideas that I know are going to jump up in my head and say, okay, here's where you want to shine, ICT. This is where you want to go out there and show everybody else that they can't get on your level. When this thing's doing this, you do it. I know that about me. I've done it for years, decades. I've done it. But there's something different about this now. We have so many things looming in the horizon that can wreck these markets instantaneously. And I know that's coming. I know it is. 
And most of you, even without me saying so, you know it too. But it's not a, a deterrent enough for you to say, well, I'm not going to take any and not I'm not going to not take a trade right now because I see everybody else doing it. So I, I got to do it. Uh, I'm 50 years old. I don't I don't look at everyone else and say, I want to do that because they're doing it. I look at my history, the human in me, the things I've always wrestled with. And I know that every single time I've hurt myself, it's because I wanted to do something that was not asked of me. In times where I should have done nothing. And I knew better. And now because, not because I'm up, and this is how I opened this up in the beginning of this uh, Twitter space. I said that, you know, I'm not obligated to you. As a reminder, I'm not saying it to be condescending, but I'm not obligated to you. And I'm telling you that because I'm reminding myself. I'm reminding myself that I don't have to do anything for you. But I love doing it. And there's a line that gets blurred sometimes because I listen to people that you all tell me not to listen to. But I want to help them because they don't believe either what I'm doing or what I teach despite people making fortunes with it and, and crediting their you know, success to the things that they learn from me, which I'm so thankful for. And I've converted a lot of people to this school of thought, not because they like me, because there's people out there that are making money using my stuff, but they don't want to say my name. They don't want to give any kind of credit to it. And they like to say it's always been there, but they're still using my vernacular, my terminology and my concepts. That's the thing that gets under my skin. That's what, frankly, pisses me off and causes me to be the abrasive ICT. And I don't like being that person. I don't like being a, a, a drag for the, the students who are here to try to learn. But I'm sharing this because I want you to know that you're going to go through this. Not me, ICT. I'm not like you. I don't have to listen. Start making money. Start making money. And start noticing people out there doing things that are nonsensical. Like things that make no sense at all. And they're in there saying that they're this and they're that. They can do this and they can do that. When you know better and you're quietly doing it on your own and you're doing things that they would never believe, then you'll think differently. But what happens when you get in a condition where maybe you didn't foresee the difficulty in price and now you're in it and you just know that that trade, that, that trade that you're in, it just simply will not move, but it hasn't gone to your stop loss, but it won't move. It, you know, it's given you every indication. It's not going to go for you. Not in the manner that you want in terms of profits. It's probably going to go for your stop, but what do you do in that situation? Well, I can tell you as a young man, I was many times praying, God, please let this trade not stop me. Yet. Please let this trade go to my profit. And I promise I will stop trading this day. But I wasn't saying about overnight trading Globex. I didn't say anything about that. So technically, I was what being honest to some degree, <laughs> but as soon as we cross midnight, I'm going to go right back out and again if he gets me out of it. And many times that prayer went unanswered and it got stopped out. And I knew, I knew I should have got out of the trade, but I wouldn't take it off. What's the problem with that? And I hope you can appreciate me using my own examples and not talking about things hypothetically where you can feel victimized because you know you've gone through this yourself. But I want you to reflect on how you've endured this and what you were doing and what you were thinking, what you were dismissing as, no, 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 that's just me not being patient for the trade. That's not me following a model. So I got to stick to my plan, my trading plan, got to push my edge. See, when I was in those environments and in those trades, 
I didn't want to get out because I was afraid if I got out, I'd be wrong. And you probably hear YouTubers or see people type it out in their Discord rooms, their Telegram channels. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, whatever medium they would use, but, or maybe a Twitter space like this. And you hear them or, or read them say, I know as soon as I get out of this, it's going to move. When they say those things, they're channeling ignorance. They're manifesting it. They're basically showing you their cards that they don't know what they're doing. Because if they did know what they were doing, it wouldn't matter if they got out and it moved. When I was a younger man and I fell victim to this, I was afraid to get out of the trades, even though I knew they were against me. The probabilities have shifted. Are you aware of it while you're in a trade? That's what I'm teaching you. Those lessons can't be taught through a paragraph or a tweet with 130 characters or less. I can't do one single video and say, here it is. It's condensed in a nice little neat, easy ICT, real fast five minute trainer. The easiest way to do it, never have to worry about it again. That's the new flavor right now. You're not gonna get it that way. You can't get it that way. It's something that has to be endured. Certain lessons have to be walked and you have to feel it. You have to have that uncertainty. You have to know what it feels like to be in that environment and how you react in it. Some of you won't have these instances where you feel powerless to get out of it. You'll think, okay, well, this doesn't work anymore. Let me just kill the trade. That, that right there, that is excellence. I wish I had that when I was younger. I didn't. I did not have that. I had no one telling me like I'm telling you right now, listening. That's what you want to do. Believe me when I tell you that is the answer. That's the solution. That's the thing you're supposed to do. And you're also indifferent to what happens after you get out. It's a bad relationship. What makes people go through all the turmoil after they break up with someone? When it's a bad relationship and you break up, the person or persons spend all that time afterwards when you're no longer together and you're thinking, you know, what, what could it have been if we stayed together? If we just would have, if he just would have stayed in our bed and not ventured out and did something else. If she would just understand me, you're doing something that isn't going to result in anything except for misery. So why do the same thing in your trading? That's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're recognizing whether you realize it or not, even if you're new. You just know something's wrong. You are, but you won't admit it. Just like I couldn't admit it. My grandfather recently passed away at the time when I started. So I get all of this pressure placed on me as a young man lost my father figure, lost my first wife, and I had something to prove. So I had all the most amazing disadvantages going into this. Plus, I hated where I was in life. So I know what it's like to feel pressure, to change the way you are and where you are and how you live. I know. I know what it's like to grow up and not have that family element supporting you. I know. I know. Even being successful like I am now. For decades, my own mother didn't care. At some point, it doesn't matter. I don't worry about my mom. I don't worry about my father who's in prison. I'll never be able to spend time with. They weren't supposed to have children. I wasn't supposed to be here. I was, I was supposed to be aborted. But because a threat by my biological father, my mother gave birth to me and never raised me. 
you can have all of your disadvantages, all the excuses of why you think you won't be able to do this. And it's all a lie. That's something for you to reach for because you don't follow the rules. Because when I don't follow the rules, I fail. I can fail just like the newest person that starts in this. If I don't submit myself to the rules and engage when I'm supposed to engage and not engage when I'm not supposed to engage, because I know me. This is why you cannot learn this in a workshop over a week. You can't learn this in a month. You can't learn it in 120 days. You can't learn it in six months. You can't learn it in one year. But at one year, you get a good foundation. And that's when the real learning starts. And I have never one time sugarcoated that. And so many people out there are trying to take what I've taught and still actively teaching. And you're trying to condense it down to something to market it to people for the real fast approach. And I swear to God almighty, if there was an easier, faster way, I would do it. It would come right out of my lips and it would be done. I wasted time in the beginning doing that. Just like those environments where if you get in a market environment where it's not conducive for a, a low resistance liquidity run, where it just runs real easy, like a hot knife through butter, just slices right through it. No problem at all going right to where you knew it was going to go and doing it faster than you were hoping it would do it. That's what I'm teaching you to look for. But they're not every day like that. Those exist sporadically in the right times, in the right settings. And because of all the uncertainty that we're seeing, seeing in the world right now, believe me, folks, we are witnessing the largest upheaval in the financial markets and financial systems, plural, globally. There has never been what we're about to endure. So you have to be careful. And I'm trying to be much more careful because of that. But if you get yourself in that situation, you may not believe in God, but somehow those three letters will come out of your mouth. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. It's funny. I've listened to Muslims doing live streams, <laughs> and they'll utter his name, which is interesting. What are you doing? You're looking outside yourself and you're resisting. You're resisting the very thing that your conscience is telling you to do. Get the hell out of that trade. You know what's coming. Regret, loss, pain. But you want to arm wrestle it. You don't want to seem weak. I'm going down. On, they're going to carry me out on my shield. Well done. You blew your account. Maybe not on that trade. But the six or seven trades after that one, that's what's coming. Why? Because you arm wrestled in an environment that you can't win. See, my tools in the right setting are flawless. That's why I can be to the tick. But have you noticed that it's not every single day that it's like that? Oh, no, wait, wait, like, wait, 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 stop right there. Your motto is every week, every day, and it won't stop. You're right. But the market you're trading, that particular market won't be every week, every day. This is always occurring every day and every week somewhere. Oh, well, there's your out. There's, of course, I didn't say anything other than that. That's how it's always been. When I was teaching Forex and primarily focusing on Forex, I had two pairs. Euro might not go to the tick, but cable did. And vice versa. And there were some times where both those two pairs that I worked with, with my group, sometimes the Aussie dollar did something perfect. You can't have an everyday day trading expectation of precision. You can't. You're just starting. 
Okay, you can't do that in the beginning. You have so many obstacles in front of you. You have no idea the difficulty in this. And it starts between your ears. And it remains between your ears. That seven pound universe, that gray matter that we call our brain has a wonderful, wonderful capability of telling you things at the wrong time. And sometimes it tells you exactly what you need to hear and then you ignore it. So if you're in market environments where by rules, the ones I've taught you and I've even told you, and it breaks my heart to see these people tweeting to me, I lost this much money. I'm not trading. Why did you do it? You know your own reasons, and that's the thing that everybody has to learn about themselves, but you want to pretend that you're not going to be that person. You're not going to be one of those statistics that have all these other flaws inside them. Some of you may have mental illnesses that are beyond the scope of mine, and you'll have to wrestle harder and do things much more – well – The word escapes me. It'll be harder for you. But you won't know that. You won't know that until you go through it. And buying courses and watching my videos or watching anybody else's videos or using this application they've created or following signals from somebody else, that will not make it exempt. No one's exempt from this. People fail because they don't incorporate their own flesh because that's what's going to do you in. How many people do you know that educate, pretend to be a mentor, will sit out here and tell you their own flaws? They will never do that because, number one, that will – Put a damper on sales. It'll make you question. Oh, maybe this isn't the person I need to learn from. I would counsel you, anyone in any industry, in any kind of endeavor whatsoever, if they're willing to show you where their weaknesses are and if they can identify them and then navigate with them. That's someone you can learn from. I'm telling you, I wish to god i had someone like i'm trying to be for you when i was coming up there was no one i had four vcr tapes with larry williams and one uh secrets of short-term trading he did like a i don't know if he was a keynote speaker As a matter of fact that's exactly what it was it was he was a keynote speaker for some some event and those are the the, the tapes i had i had a course by don fishback 90 percent options trading which is trash Don, if you're listening, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but it really was garbage. And the books that I wasted money on. And I've said it many times before, I mean, why do I keep them? Because they have sentimental value. Not because there's any value between the covers of those books. But I spent a lot of money. I worked hard to, to make the money to buy those books over the years, collecting them. And I just can't bring it to throw them away. And they're not valuable enough to give to anybody and say, here, I don't want to have this anymore. Here, you learn from this. This is all trash. It's all garbage. You want to hear how to do something? Let the story start with, here's, not, here's what not to do. And if you want to find out real quick if you're ready or someone else is ready to learn, if their attention span will not permit them to listen to someone tell you or others, this is what you want to avoid. You, that person listening that feels that way, you are the waste of time. You are. Because the point I've gotten to from the beginning of this discussion, it's going to be far more harder than you think it's ever going to be. 
And I've told everyone that's ever listened to me in the last three years, this is extremely hard. 30 years I've been doing this. These candlesticks are not new to me. But the way the markets are behaving is, and anybody that's been trading for a longer period than two years, three years, you know, some of you just now started. You have no idea what you're walking into and how much harder it is. Anyone that has been trading for a long period of time, and I'm saying mm, five years or more, I think that's a fair amount of time. You're not new. And you have seen market environments that are not like this. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm referring to. And it's not some kind of cryptic message. This market is behaving differently. It is going to be hard for you to learn in this environment, but learning in this environment will make you so much better. So much better than it was for me. And we had, well, by definition, in terms of what we've seen in recent years in terms of volatility, it was like a snail's crawl. Where if you got three handles on the day, <laughs> then you did well. That was a good move in the morning. Three handles. Three handles. People's stop losses are bigger than that now. But that's the way it was back then. But the volatility you have today needs to be respected because it can do wild stuff in a short span of time. And you'll be in that situation praying to a God you never believed in. But now you're reaching for him now. And your heavens will be like brass. And sometimes it'll be for people that are, are believers in the same faith that I have. And you just want to get out of that situation. Oh, God, please, please, please let this trade pan out for me. Please, please just let me not get stopped out on this one. I won't trade the rest of the week if I can just get this one. Lying. And that prayer gets unanswered because your heavens are like brass. What happens then? You look down and a new idea comes to mind. You're going to plant a seed again in that risk. But now... The ground's like iron. You can't turn the soil over. You can't cultivate it. You can't put a new trade on because why? Fear. Paralysis. What do you do in that situation? See, as a new trader, a new developing student, you don't know what to do. So what are you going to be left to do? Impulsive decisions? Well, let me just go in here and figure it out. I'll find my way through it. Yeah. Right on through another blown account. Well done. How many times do you have to do that before you would learn a lesson? I watch people tweeting to others and me talking about doing that same thing in environments that I've openly said we're in low probability. They're trying to pyramid. They're trying to trade with larger leverage. They're trying to trade every session, every day, trying to trade every macro. ICT said between this time and this time, there's going to be, I'm getting in there, I'm doing it. Okay. You have to have some kind of premise to be acting on. You don't, what, you don't know what to expect. You're new. You have no idea what you're doing. Trying to engage in an environment that I'm not willing to touch myself. So what is that teaching you about yourself? You're reckless. You're reckless and you're impulsive. Are you willing to observe that and identify it? If that's who you are that's listening to me, are you willing to let yourself identify that weakness in you? Trust me, it's okay to identify weaknesses. You want to do that in the comfort of a demo. That's why I teach like this, folks. You have no idea who you are. You're going to get in these markets and think you're, well, I was going to say John Wayne, but that really dates me now, doesn't it? But <laughs> you think you're John Wick. There you go. You think you're John Wick. You're going to go out there and get your ass wicked. And you get frustrated. Oh, I'll just reset my account. 
it's only hundred dollars or so and i'm just going to do the same thing i just did because all i did was enter too early or too late or i put my stop loss in the wrong position wrong you're trading in an environment that's not conducive for high probability but you can't see that you can't recognize that because you're not listening when the guy that's talking to you is telling you these things in advance he's taking a road trip 1100 miles away not touching the market but you're in there blowing your funded account where's the logic in that but ict you're not the only one that can find profitable trades you're right but why are you trying to push with my concepts in an environment i'm not trying to touch i've already said it if you win it's coincidence and i know it's painful for some of you to hear that like there's no way it's not it's not coincidence it's skill i'm a monster i'm i'm being i'm being made into a monster so like you said you said i was gonna be a monster <laughs> yeah okay but you don't want to wreak havoc on your own account like godzilla stomping around in tokyo destroying everything that's your equity curve you just dis this totally dismantled it in a short span of time in the last two weeks how much damage have you done not me not your broker not the method or the concepts how much damage did you do? Uh-oh. That's a roll call for responsibility. That nobody wants to take initiative and stand up and say, yeah, I did it. But the ones that are ready to do that, they're ready to learn. I ignored it too. I tried to find some kind of external reasons why I was failing as a young man. And I promise you, knowing what I know now, looking back, it was always me. There was no other contributing factor. It was me. And when you come to grips with that and you accept it, it's liberating. Because then and only then can you start fixing the issues. But you have to be able to identify them and stop ignoring them or pretending they're not there. That's the reason why you're not finding success. You're arm wrestling things that need to be dealt with in you the person every single one of my failed students are failures because they themselves won't listen because if what i teach is flawed logic it wouldn't be the fastest thing spreading all over the industry in terms of trading people would not be passing all these funded accounts getting on leaderboards taking wild withdrawals from their efforts doing it they would all be failing wouldn't they What are they doing differently? They're taking it serious. They're treating it like a business. They're not in there gambling. They're not in there thinking, well, all I gotta do is reset the account. All I gotta do is pay the hundred bucks reset. If I get an affiliate program, I can do it and I don't have to have, uh, pay for the resets. Think, where are you in all of that? You have to find yourself, and I can't do it for you. No mentor can. No teacher can do that. You have to allow yourself the time to find out who you are, how you're going to derail yourself. And you will. And you'll know right when it's about to happen. And that's why you're supposed to journal. And for the folks that don't want to journal, oh, I ain't got time for journaling, man. I got money to make, man. I got time to be journaling. I ain't writing books. I guarantee you these people don't make money. Not consistently. I promise you they don't make money. Every high tech position in the world, all of them, keep data on their performance, KPIs, every industry. Every, every food producer, every commodity manufacturer, producer, any kind of company, they all have performance stats. That means they're doing what? They're journaling. Now, for the folks that don't want to journal in their trades and their development, doesn't that make you feel stupid? 
like you're going to walk through this. No real effort is just going to fall in your lap. It's going to be easy. Why well, do that? I got to spend time writing in journals. I can't make money on those old moves anyway. Why would I, why would I even want to do that? You're going to continuously work the rest of your life. And you're going to be even more miserable because you won't find success in this. And you won't be successful in your job. And you'll be miserable. The rest of your life, you've been relegated to the shared desk with Carl. Imagine that. The last thing you see before retirement is him smiling, saying, I told you, you'd never get out of here. <laughs> There's going to be times when your heavens are like brass and the ground you stand on is going to be like iron. What do you do? You take a road trip, baby. You take a road trip. You go on a fishing trip. You go into your hobbies that are outside the marketplace. Pour your time and attention into your family or your friends apart from the market. It's good. It's good to do it. It allows you to recalibrate and reset your mindset. And you give yourself permission to forgive yourself for not doing it sooner. I'm not obligated to do any of this for you. Just like you're not obligated to trade every day. Have you ever given yourself permission? Because I'm giving it to you right now. You have my permission as your mentor to not trade every day. In fact, that should be a goal for you. When you make money and you're new, stop. Let the week close in profit. That's a skill set. It's teaching patience. It's teaching enough to be content with enough. But ICT, it was only $1,100. I could have made, right, but did you make $1,100 at your job after taxes? No. So why are you going to risk it? You're not skilled yet. You're finding yourself. You have to continuously instill this cheerleading mindset as you're growing up in who you are eventually going to be in the, as a trader. You have to cheerlead yourself. You have to do that through journaling. Spend time looking at when you got it right. You're going to need those times. You're going to doubt yourself. You're going to doubt your future performance. If you try to trade every single day and you start going in the drawdown, here's another permission. You don't have to fix your drawdown right now. What? You don't have to. Who says you had to do it right now? Who says you had to fix the drawdown and bring it completely back this week or this month? Who said that? You did. Or the people you hear others on social media crow on about, oh, this and that. Who's running your business? Them or you? Think. Because if you're letting other people on social media impact your decisions about when and how you're going to trade, you're not running your business. If you're not running your business, who is? The people that don't care about it. And if they don't care about your business, believe me, they only care enough to see it fail. It would be nothing more pleasurable for them to see you fail and go on social media and complain and bellyache. Oh, I did it again to myself. And they feel great about themselves because they're failing in privacy. So when your heavens are like brass and you can't find your way out of a position you're in, in terms of profit, close the trade. As soon as you recognize that you feel like you got to pray for the outcome of that trade to be different than what you think is already going to happen, because you know you're looking at the charts, you see it. Something in the underpinnings of the marketplace have shifted. You recognized it, and now your conscience is telling you it's time to hit the exit ramp. Just don't take the exit in South Carolina like I did. You have to stop, remove yourself from the risk, and walk away from it.
And it doesn't mean immediately look for another pair, or another market to trade and try to plant yourself in risk again because the ground you're standing on is now iron. You can't turn the soil over and place good money in terms of seed for risk and expect to get the results that you didn't make up in the first trade. Why? Why why not do that? Because your mindset is now distorted because you feel performance anxiety. You put on a trade, it didn't work for you. So now as a young man, especially, I noticed the ladies that are students of mine, they, they generally don't have this characteristic in them. Like it, they, they're willing to accept they're wrong. They don't like when they lose money. That's the thing they don't like. Where men, they don't like losing, but they don't mind taking on big losses. They don't like the aspect of it being wrong. So there's a, and we may be arguing semantics, and I guess some of you could you know, present that as an argument, but I don't see it that way. I see it as the men, they have this, they, they want to be, they want to be right. Women, not so much. They don't, they, they don't care about being right. They don't want to lose money. Where men, they don't care about losing money. They could lose money as long as they end the day being right. They can go down in severe drawdown and come back. Yeah, look what I was able to do. I was down 38% in the intraday, took 16 trades, but the last two, I got it all back, baby. Woo hoo, holla. And the ladies in my fold do not ever want to go through major drawdown like that, and they don't care if they're wrong. So <laughs> where are you in that spectrum? Where are you in that mindset? Some of you don't know. You haven't been doing it long enough. And that's why it takes a lot longer to learn this than everybody else promotes it to be. You can be so successful. Live the life of your dreams. It's Lambo lifestyle. But none of them are telling you the adversities that you're going to go through. They're not going to tell you how to deal with it. What's permissible? What's realistic? Five handles, not 200 to one, are multiple setups. Everything I teach you is meant to meet the practical expectations of meeting ends. Meeting one bill a month. Whatever the lowest bill is, that's what you aim for first. But something happens. Something happens in your mind when you, when you first start dealing with these charts and you're demoing or you're rushing through that part by never doing the demoing, which is to teach you, you. You're learning who you are in the demo. That's why I can't stand these neophytes out there pretend to be mentors telling people, you can't learn how to trade with a demo. You gotta put some money, you gotta put some skin in the race. Um, okay, I've done that and it fails miserably. And it gives you all of these anxiety inducing things that you would never have had if you wouldn't have did that. I didn't know the mistakes I had in me and the capability of me screwing it up because I never risked real money before as a younger man. I jumped in way sooner than I should have. I literally did like two, three weeks of just back testing paper trades. That's it. And I did one walk forward, I think a week or maybe a week and a half at most, not even two weeks. And I convinced myself I was ready to put money into a live account. $2,600 on a nation's bank, which doesn't exist anymore, nation's bank credit card. Now tell me the sense in that. Zero. And it's no surprise my first trade was impulsively in a market that I was never really interested in, orange juice. It's too thin. 
It wasn't even seasonally looking back at seasonally. It was not even in a position for it to do anything. And I traded in a vehicle I had no experience in options, but I had to do it. I got the account open. It's been two days. I better take a trade. And overnight, 50% of the account gone. Not the account, but the, the options premium. I paid $1,500 for orange juice option, which is extremely expensive. So I bought an overvalued option. I didn't know it. And overnight, lost $750 of that option premium. And then closed the account that day. Wonderful lesson. Perfect illustration of what not to do. <laughs> I wish we had demos back then. We had to do everything on paper, write it down in a notebook. That's how we did it. Make our own charts. We had to draw the high, the low, the open, the close, tick on every single chart. If we traded it or monitored it, that's how we did it. You have no idea the advantages that you have today, but you won't use them. You're trying to rush through still. Don't learn how to trade with a demo account. Learn the broker with the demo and then go in with real money, even if it's a little bit of money. That's someone that is absolutely not making money consistently and they don't know how to trade and you should not be listening to them. And I don't care who they are, how many people follow them and how much they're liked right now. I don't care. And you can hate me. I don't care. That's real. Because that's someone that doesn't even know what they're talking about. You have so many things going on in your mind that you're going to bring to this that are going to derail you. And you have to know what they are. And you cannot discover that without pain and loss or building in fear, anxiety-inducing concerns for your equity with live money. You do that, you're going to be scared money. In the beginning, my second account that I opened up, I was terrified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked two jobs, pizza delivery, everything I could. Picked up cans, turned them in and redeemed them for money. I did all that stuff, folks. I did all of that. Walked down streets, picking up soda cans, beer cans, all that stuff. I did that just to get whatever I could scraped up. So don't talk to me about, you don't know what it's like, ICT. <laughs> you don't know what it's like. You don't know what I did. You don't know what I went through. But that second account, I was terrified. Terrified. I was afraid of every possible entry. And you're wondering, why the hell does ICT have all these concepts? Because I had to cope with it. I wanted to have an arsenal. My weakness was fear of knowing when to get in. Bro, let me tell you something. I got 81 ways to get into a trade. 81. And that's why these jokers on the internet will say, oh, he's got something to always explain why the market. Is. You're damn right I do. I know it like the back of my hand, but I also know when it's likely to slap me around, I'm not playing. No, thank you. I've been there before. You haven't. You're too new. You don't even know what it looks like, but I'm sharing that experience with you. I'm allowing you to find yourself in a closed circuit environment where you are not incurring monetary risk. That's why I teach with a demo. That's why it's the best way to learn. That's where you need to learn in a laboratory experiment setting where you cannot lose money and build anxiety-inducing mindsets that's going to be a prevention to you finding success. How much plainer do I have to make it, folks? Stop listening to these kids pretending to be money millionaire mentors, okay? They literally just graduated school. They probably dropped out of college. They have no idea what they're talking about. The only money they got in their accounts is from whatever they sold. Whatever their affiliate programs are, their multi-level marketing garbage. They're not trading. They cannot trade. They will not show you what the market's going to do. They cannot do it. So why the hell are you listening to their advice? Because you see them pretending with their pomp, their rented cars. 
I own my cars. I own my home. There's no note on my cars. There's no note on my homes. And I show you where it's going to go. I execute on it and I use the logic. And I'm telling you when it's not right for me, by example, I stopped, I walked away. Now think, who do you want to learn from? Somebody that can walk the walk and talk the talk and press stop and know why and have no concerns for, oh, I might miss something. I don't have any fear of missing out. You never hear me say, whoa, why did that happen? Why did that slap in the ES just happen? <laughs> no, uh -uh. I'm not surprised by that. But I can go into a week where I'm expecting certain things to happen and they don't manifest. Okay, I'm not surprised by that. I'm just not interested. See the difference there? That's experience. That's 30 years, baby, of doing the same stuff all the time, expecting the expected results at the end of it. But if it's going to show me signatures that are not supporting what I'm teaching you, that's not an invitation for you to find a new way of doing it. All these new guys and gals out there trying to reinvent the wheel, I've already gave you the wheel. You have to build the car on top of it. And some of you don't want a Lamborghini. Some of you are just okay with a pickup truck, a Volkswagen, a Jeep, or even, well, I won't go there. <laughs> What's he going to say? What was he going to say? I speak, please tell me what you're going to say. No, I'm not going to do that. But there is a learning curve to this that nobody really expects to exist until they step into it. And they don't like it. It's a reminder to them that everything worth doing requires a lot more effort than you thought it was going to take. There's no shortcuts to this, folks. I am the shortcut. I promise you, even though it seems like it's long-winded all the time, this is the shortcut. You cannot make it simpler than this. You're waiting for the market to go up to run stops or reprice to an inefficiency. It's going to drop to run stops or reprice to an inefficiency, or it's going to go sideways. And guess what? When the market's going to go sideways, ICT is doing something else. Now, imagine for a second, imagine that you paid me money for the month of April, I would have to do something, right? I would have to perform. I would have to sit down and give you my opinion. Guess what? That doesn't have to happen anymore. I don't do that anymore. That's why I'm never charging ever for education. When I'm done in November, I'm done. I'm done. I have so much enjoyed the last two weeks of just simply saying, nah, that's my life. That's what I want to get back to. I didn't ask you for my, or for your permission to do what I did. I don't need to ask for it. But I did what I had to do from a psychological point of view where I'm reminding myself that I'm in control of me. And since 2016, I have not felt in control of my own life. I've allowed people all around the world to conduct my life for me. Tell me when I had to be somewhere, what I had to do, answer emails. Answer, I can't even keep up with the emails. It's too many of you. And it just feels so good for me as a man to be able to unplug. I needed it. Like I needed it. And it was so good to be out there with my kids and just having conversations with them. And I broke down, we were in a restaurant and uh, one of my sons said to me, he goes, dad, I've never seen this with you before. And I said, what? He goes, like, you're sitting down, you're talking to us and you're not even talking about the market. You're not talking about your students. 
It's just like you're talking to us. And I lost it. So as much as I love doing this with you all, I love doing that with them more. And I'd be honest in, by saying that I sometimes feel guilty about that. And I shouldn't. They're my kids. But I have built this life all around trading since I was 20 years old. And I was not the best father. I was not the best husband. I've never done anything outside my relationship and I've always provided for my kids, but I was not there in the house with them, but I was not there. So it's not always about money that you need to learn lessons about because you can be wildly successful be a pillar in the community of the industry that you're in and be an utter failure as a father, a husband, a wife. And no amount of money, none of that can wipe it away. You have no idea how hard this industry is because you don't know how hard you're going to make it on yourself. That's the variable. And nobody ever writes that in their books. I bought every one of them. They're never going to place that clarity on it because they have something else to sell later on. And the reality is if you are told this in the beginning, and you're not going to be willing to make the sacrifices. It's really what it is. You have to sacrifice your wants. Because you call them needs. Now, I need to do this, ICT. You don't understand. No, I understand. But you need to understand. Just simply because you want it. And you call it needing it. That's already a problem. Because when you say the word need. Need is going to be, I need to take a trade. I need to get that drawdown back right now. I need to go and reset my account. I need to do this. I need to do, you don't need to do anything except for learn. You need to listen to me. I'm not giving you bad advice. I'm not trying to prolong your success. I'm not trying to steer you away from something else that might be better because if you can find it, go do it. If you find something better than I got, Tell me about it. I'll look at it and I'll stop what I'm doing and do that. I swear to God, that's what I'll do. But I've already been down that road before, folks. I've already been down that road dozens of times before I left my 20s. And I'll be 51 in August. This dog is set in his ways and I'm changing this industry. And you're all part of it. You're on the ride with me. We're blazing a trail together. And that's freaking awesome. That's awesome. We're laying down a legacy where people are literally doing things in a controlled manner, learning how to do this in a safe setting, and then you're watching students walk out there in the real world and put it to task. And they're changing their lives with it, independent of whatever I think is going to be in the marketplace. That's awesome. Your success story is waiting. But you can't hurry it up. You can't, you can't usher it any faster than it's going to be. And the speed at which you receive it or get to it is unique to you. And be comfortable with that. The harder you push to make it sooner, you're just pushing it further down the line. I swear it's the way it is. You, you just got to enjoy the process. Go through it. And one day you'll know you're ready. You won't feel impulsive about anything. You're comfortable. You'll be able to navigate. You'll know this is a market in a, in a condition right now. You don't want to touch it. And you don't care who else is making money. Who cares? Well done. Good job that you made money. 
It doesn't mean I have to do anything. It doesn't mean I'm less of a traitor. What? That's not what you see on social media, is it? I don't want you to think that way. I don't promote that idea. Your results are yours. I can't sleep in your bed and wrestle with falling asleep because the drawdown you've taken on. And I can't relish in the successes of the profits that you made in your trades because I didn't incur the risk. So why are you trying to do that with other people's results? You're minding their business. They're minding theirs. You mind yours. Some of you won't. Some of you won't ever be in business because you're doing stupid stuff like that. You're trying to keep up with the Joneses. You're rushing too soon, and then when you find yourself in a situation that you know in your heart that you're rushing, you shouldn't be there risking real money or trying to get a funded account passed. You don't know what you're doing yet. Why even bother with that until you know exactly what you're doing? How you're going to mess yourself up? You have to learn who you are. The last time we talked, I was in Florida, and I uh, said to you that Alexander Elder's book, Trading for a Living, uh, the first portion of that book, in my opinion, is the, that's the gem. And he talks about alcoholism and, and the effects of it and the way it affects people, families, relationships, all that business. I've never been drunk in my life, but I've watched everybody in my family be under the influence of either drugs or alcohol. And you'd be surprised to see how some of them were totally different people when they were drunk. Absolutely. Like, like you would never recognize that's the same person. Totally nasty drunks, like crazy violent drunk. And they would say, oh, it's the whiskey talking. No, that's not. That's not whiskey talking. Whiskey just numbed them enough to let them have no inhibitions. Without inhibitions, the real person manifests themselves. And that's what happens when you get with trading with live money. You're drunk. You're driving drunk right now with a live account with no experience. You're under the influence of what? trying to make money and nobody's there they can take the keys from you so you have to know these things before you do it because you don't want to find out that you are a nasty violent drunk that crashes when you get with live money that's why you have to do this in demo you're going to find your character flaws that causes those same individuals to go to alcohol to self-medicate. They know what's going on, but they won't share it with anybody to help get themselves through it. Failed relationship, midlife crisis, anxiety, generalized anxiety, I'm sure is a, a major contributing factor. But all those things and other things that it's, the list is too long, You've been hurt, you've been scarred, a bad relationship, you broke up, you're lonely, whatever that is, leads them to alcohol or substance abuse. And trading is in that too. It is the same thing, folks. It's the same thing. I have never been drunk with alcohol. Now, I guess you can say I've been, I guess, high from CBD oil. It had THC in it, and I needed it for my back. It was... Very much appreciate. I haven't done it in two years or more now, but I can tell you this. If I have another episode where I was going through it like I did then, I would gladly do it, and I was opposed to anything marijuana. I don't smoke it. I've never smoked it. I've never smoked it, anything like that, but I am not against it. I don't think you should be trading under the influence of it because I was really relaxed, <laughs> but the point is trading with live money. If you don't know yourself, you don't know your model, and you don't know the way the market is behaving, and you haven't seen at least four quarters or a full year of what seasonality looks like, you have no baseline. You have no idea. So that's equivalent to you flying into a city you've never been, heartbroken, angry because someone left you. You got fired. You got a cancer diagnosis, six months to live. 
and now you're in a hotel where there is a high-end bar right across the street. What are you going to do? You're going to go over there and medicate yourself. But how are you going to conduct yourself after that? You don't know. So why would you do that with live money? You don't know what you're going to do to yourself. And you don't know the consequences that you're going to do to yourself as a result of whatever it is you do while you're drunk. Trading with live money, losing that, the pain that that's going to bring on because you weren't ready. And you're going to know that you weren't ready when you were ignoring that you knew beforehand. And that's going to present all kinds of scar tissue that's going to promote you to do what? Make bad decisions. And now you have fear. When teaching my students to operate and learn about themselves in a demo, that's what the demo is there for. But they tell you, here, learn our platform, learn how to trade the patterns that you do with the demo. Well, you think you watched a video by me or someone else or read a book. That's what I did. Well, I know what that looks like. A one, two, three top. Oh, yeah, it's a descending wedge and that's a head and shoulder. I'm ready. <laughs> You're not. I wasn't. You, you, this is the way it is, folks. But the demo is there for you to discover who you are. What makes you tick? Where are you impulsive? See, that's what it takes to do this. And anybody that tells you otherwise is full of shit. And that's just the way it is. They have some kind of ulterior motive. They have something to sell you. They want to derail you. But I'm telling you, you can do this. But you're going to have to submit to a lot more time than you want to. But once you learn how to do it and you know what sets you off, what makes you feel impulsive? What are the triggering mechanisms in your personal life, in your thinking? Are you wrestling with a mental illness that makes you do certain things that are, are not you know, supportive for a successful endeavor in trading that you have to now find coping mechanisms? Are you a drunk? Are you a drug user? If you are, you need to tackle that because trading will not work with that. Are you in a toxic relationship? If it is that you're in a toxic relationship, you either fix the relationship or leave it. And if you've been you know, removed against your choice from a relationship because they left you or you had to leave because it was a toxic relationship, you have to let that go. And forgive them and forgive yourself and move on. Because if you're feeling all those things, those pressures and regrets, and what if thinking if we stayed together, or what if I would have left sooner, it would have been so much better. You got to stop. Because all those things are going to trigger you to want to feel better. And to feel better, you escape. That's what I did. I got in an RV and I escaped. The pressure of me wanting to do something, I know my rules say I'm not going to be able to do. So I have to take myself away from it. I've never been drunk before, but I get drunk in these markets because I get a bloodlust. I know what I can do in here, but I also know that you're not going to, like just well, just yesterday. I recorded the trade. I told you where it was going to go for ES. Tired. I could not really focus. I was tired, really, really tired. When I was driving home, the yellow line was literally vanishing, and I had to keep blinking. And I'm like, okay, I'm talking about the, the yellow line on the left side of the lane. So I was passing uh, semi trucks to get you know get around them. Average speed seventy six miles an hour. Not safe, but I wanted I wanted to get home. Like I wanted to get home and and bed down here, and I just. Uh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's what I just did, really. But uh, uh, before I mentioned what I said, I'm going to need you to help me out here. I'm going to go to Twitter. What was the thing I said right before? What was I saying? 
once he tweeted to me. I don't know exactly where I was. Folks are leaving me out here hanging. <laughs> now, I was saying right before driving home, I was tired, but uh, yeah, I know that uh, the trade that I did yesterday, that's what it was. Nobody really mentioned it here, but I just remember what I was talking about. Um, I, I told you what the ES was going to do. In tweets, I said I'd like to see the new day opening gap, which is the difference between where Friday's, I'm not Friday, but where 5 p.m. closing price is, and then the restart at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's new day opening gap. Uh, Friday, we didn't completely close that in, and we traded lower, and we traded down into the gap of, uh, of a fair value gap on the five minute chart was set the stage for a rally up into the new date opening gap and then that buy side liquidity pool. And there's a volume and balance on the weekly chart. And I think I mentioned um, in the live session or Twitter space I did in Florida, I know I said it audibly. I'm wondering now if I said it to my older students, but I did talk about the the volume and balance on the weekly chart. So for the sake of those individuals that don't know what I'm referring to. If you pull up the ES chart on TradingView, the symbol is ESM2023. Click it to time frame of weekly, and then you'll see on the weekly chart, Monday, August 15th of 2022, it's a down close weekly candle. And then the next candle is down with uh, Monday, August 22nd. Okay, there's a wick doesn't come all the way back up to the previous week's low. So there's a little bit of a gap there. That's a real gap. That's a liquidity void. That's a real liquidity void. And the fact that those two bodies of those respective candles don't connect, you want to have that entire range highlighted on ES because that's where we're likely to go. And if you look at the fair value gap that's on the March 27th of 2023 on that same weekly chart, the only thing we did was we traded down into that. And then that's why you see it going higher. Now, I also stated that we're going into May. And during the month of May, going into June, traditionally, that's a seasonal tendency for it to sell off and, and, and move lower. I'm thinking that we might pump up into the high on ES for January 30th, that high or that wick on the weekly chart, that consequent encroachment. Uh, we've gone through it two subsequent weeks after that on the upside. So because of that, I'm favoring more the January 30th high and then the volume and balance I just gave you on the weekly chart. So that range, um, that small little actual gap between August 15th weekly low and the August 22nd weekly high, that small little gap up there. <laughs> we could go up to that and how we trade there, you know, that's what I'd be watching. But if we do have the seasonal tendency for um, May going into June, if you look at the relative equal lows on ES, those being December 19th of 2022 and the low on March 13th of 2023, there's sell side below that. So if we do have our weakness in ES and the seasonal in impact or seasonal tendency does materialize going into the month of May into the second week of June, uh, that's where it would draw to. So I'm kind of like forecasting the quarterly shift before it's in the chart. So I'm not saying it is going to happen, but that's what I'm anticipating. So therefore, I would like to see things get in alignment with that. But obviously, I can trade against that because it hasn't really it hasn't manifested itself yet. So what I was going to say, and I lost my train of thought moments ago, was yesterday. I gave you an outline on Twitter where I thought I was going to go, new day opening gap, and then there was a buy-sell liquidity pool. And because of my fatigue, 
uh, the entry. I moved my stop up too soon and it came down and stopped me out. But the conditions were still there. So I simply just re-entered and I saw folks saying, you know, what was it? What was the entry criteria? Why, you know, how do you get back into it? And, you know, whatever. Uh, the idea of what I outlined, that was going to be the draw on liquidity. And we had already traded it to an old new week opening gap high multiple times. And we had three times that it traded lower on a one and five minute chart. So sell side was, was wiped out. So the inefficiency is going to be on the buy side. So reaching higher, how high can it go to old new week opening gap, to the new day opening gap, and to an old buy side liquidity pool high and higher. And that's basically what I tweeted. So I recorded that and showed that example, and there it is. So I have ways of trading and getting into a setup that aren't going to be always explained to you. Um, but the models that I teach, if you stay with that, I told you as a student, I told you to wait until the silver bullet forms. The silver bullet is highlighted in that fair value gap that when I usually do a fair value gap for like for bullishness, it'll either be a, like a light blue or sometimes if I'm not using blue, it'll be green. If I'm looking for something that's bearish, it's just going to be some hue or color that's red. Okay. But I highlighted that fair value gap in the recording. That's the one that was going to be used for a silver bullet. And you can see it, it does in fact deliver on that basis. It goes and runs up and goes higher. You're learning to be rule-based. I have lots of rules. I have lots of models. I have lots of approaches to trading. I'm not limited to that. And because I've been away from the marketplace, I have to get myself back in an alignment. So if I see something, I'm going to, I'm going to get in it because I have 81 ways to get into a trade. So I, I don't have a fear of missing a trade. I never, ever, ever have a fear of missing a trade. You may not have all 81 of my entry mechanisms. You have a number of them, but you won't have fear of missing out because I'm giving you time-based setups. Between 10 o'clock in the morning and 11 o'clock in the morning, there is a fair value gap that will reach for inefficiencies or liquidity. That happens every day. Every single day, that will form. Between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock, every single day, every single trading day, there will be the same type of setup. So there's your PM silver bullet. True to form, I always tuck them in real deep in these lectures because the weak ones won't listen. They'll watch the people that want to make the five-minute trainers, <laughs> and they'll miss all the stuff that goes around that supports it. But the idea of fearing a missed move, there's no reason to fear that. How many here, – here's a question for you folks. Listen. Pork, put the pork rhymes down, okay? Listen. How many trading days next week, six months from now, how many trading days are going to have a 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock? And how many of them are going to have a 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock window of opportunity? And that's a trick question, but sit down. You're going to have to prepare yourself for this one. But every single one of them, every single one of them have that. So why, pray tell, would you ever fear missing a move? That's, a, that's what a neophyte does. That's, what's, that's a hallmark for someone that says, I, I, I don't want to be in this trade. I know, I know if, I, if, I, if I stay with it, I'm going to be a, a loss. But I know also if I get out, it's going to move. What, what? That's what they're talking to you with. They're telling you those things. They're literally telling you in no uncertain terms. They have no idea what they're doing. Why listen? The results are not rooted in sound logic. It's just happenstance. And I had nine, min, uh, nine months of happenstance. Initially, I had that. And it evaporated. So you want to have logic. You want to have sound logic as to why you're taking a trade. And you want to be doing it with a rule-based idea that you've worked with for months that you have grown accustomed to when it doesn't work for you because you're floundering in the beginning. You have no idea what you're doing, but you're not beating yourself up because you're not losing money. You're not wasting the mortgage money. Your spouse isn't going to be upset with you because you've wasted some money that should have been used for some other things around the home. 
if you just listen to me, I'm going to keep you out of trouble. Your spouse can't be upset with you because you didn't waste any money. I'm not charging you any money. I'm teaching you a life skill that is absolutely going to benefit you in more ways than you realize. But you can't do things outside of what I'm telling you to do and what not to do. If you do, you're teaching yourself. The results are yours. And when you fail, don't ascribe that to me. The folks that listen to me, that do everything I tell you them to do and what not to do and how to progress and practice and study and learn in a demo account. Stop listening to people complain about I'm teaching you in a demo account. Why doesn't this guy trade with a live account? Why can't you be as accurate as I am? How's that, how, how about that? <laughs> okay, let's start there. How, how come you can't be as accurate as I can? Because until you get that fixed, I don't need to do anything else. So be comfortable with discovering who you are. Be comfortable with not knowing all the answers in the beginning because you'll learn them. You'll find your own unique approach to doing this with everything that everyone else has been exposed to with my content. You might not want to trade that 2022 model. You might use the optimal trade entry. You might just simply do a bullish breaker, bearish breaker. That's enough for you. During 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, if a breaker forms, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. You just won't get the better fill that the fair value gap would give you. So it's a matter of letting your own personal tastes and your own personality dictate what you're going to do. That way you don't feel pressed into a mold. And had the same feelings that I had, where I, I can only trade with this guy said in this book. And if it didn't make sense to me, I wasted all those times forcing something that wasn't fitting me. It didn't fit me. And that's why I'm I'm practical. I know I'm not the best mentor out there. I'm not. I have always maintained that that that's something I wish I was better at. But nothing out there is better than what my concepts do. There's nothing better than precise, timely, precise, precision, sound logic, understanding liquidity, understanding the algorithmic macros that really starts these moves. They're predictable. And you can, you can rest assured that there's much more coming this year. And what I've already given you is more than you'll ever find in any other medium. No other teacher, no other resource, no other approach is going to get this much detail that removes all the things you're worrying about. You're worrying about what happens if this and what happens if that. How about what if you just listen, follow the rules, and let time do its work? Let's do that. Humor me. Okay, spend this year doing what I'm telling you to do and avoid the things I'm telling you to avoid and then come at me with your questions. Because I promise you, you're going to see results that you can't appreciate now because you don't know what's coming. You don't know where your discoveries are going to be in yourself. And that many of them might be painful, but don't run from them. Don't hide from them. You don't want to be in a situation where you're trying to pray your way out of a, a situation that you put yourself into and your conscious is telling you, get out of it. Just simply get out. If you have the thought process of if I get out of this or when I get out of this, I know it's going to move. You don't know what you're doing. You're not content with the model. So you're greedy. You're being greedy. I know if I get out of this trade, I'm in profit right now, but I know as soon as I close this trade, it's going to run. If you vocalize that outwardly, if you type that into any kind of social media, that is the surest testimony that you don't know what you're doing. You have work to do. Refine that. Why is it that you feel that way? What are you lacking? Targeting. Time of day. Day of week. Simple. But you can't appreciate that until you wrestle with it. 
And then when you come to terms with it and you understand, oh, well, I don't have to be concerned about if I get out of it and it runs because the setups that I use, they're time-based and they form every day within a 60 minute window. What am I worried about? Like you're never going to have another 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock period ever in trading. Like there's never going to be another trading day that never has that time window aspect. <laughs> Even on holiday schedules, there's a 10 to 11 because they shut it down at noon. Silver bullet. That's why it's named that. <laughs> but if you have a full trading day, you have one again between two o'clock and three o'clock. That could be your entire model. Why are you stressing? You're worried about stuff that has no real bearing on the success or failure of your future trading endeavor. You're making mountains out of molehills. Worrying about stuff that's eating up energy, time, and concern. When in doubt, stay out. When in doubt, get out. There's so many statistically provable, go back in time, don't just take my word for this. Go back and look at it. It's always there. Be content with enough. What's enough, ICT? Five handles in the beginning. That I did not say stop at five handles and never get any more than that. My audience members are people that don't know what they're doing and they've never done this before. But you can do exceedingly well with five handles. Imagine if you just did five handles in the morning and five handles in the afternoon. And you did that hmm, twice a week. What kind of impact would that have? Just with one mini contract. We're not talking about five contracts or 15 contracts because the funded account says you can trade that many. What would that do for you? A lot. What would it do if you just got one of them a week and you had the discipline to stop and you were consistent with doing that? How's that failure? But see, in your mind, you're already saying that's not enough because you see me and other students doing way more than that. That's incorrect. That's toxic logic. You can't think like that in the beginning. That's what gets everybody in trouble. And you're going to find yourself in that situation where your heavens are like brass. And you're going to be praying, please fix this. Please help me get better at this. Please, please, please. Even atheists find a way, find a way to start talking to Jesus then. Completely avoidable. Completely avoidable. If you feel that way, if you feel completely disconnected from the, uh, from the market, you just can't focus, stop. It's going to be there. I promise you. I was on a road trip, came back, boom, felt confident, looked what I was looking for. There you go, to script. And I had a losing trade. <gasps> you saw me bleed. It's okay. Went right back in there. Patched up, boom. <laughs> had a guy I read in uh, somebody else's YouTube channel comments. Um, the, the video wasn't even about me, but someone mentioned me and uh, <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, he doesn't do this and do that when he's trading. And his examples, he doesn't even have the uh, candle countdown uh, thing. So that's, that's definitely a delayed data. What? <laughs> the, the, the things that people come up with as an excuse to simply not learn what it is I'm teaching for free is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But that's human, right? People are human, you know, you're human, I'm human. We all have our things, our quirky little things you have to deal with. Mine is wrestling with proving, 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 proving. Every single time I go out and do anything, in my mind, I'm expecting to hear my grandfather say, that was good, but I'm never going to get it. So that's what keeps me going. All the accolades and all the, the handshaking, the, 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 High fives and the way to go, ICT, keep going, you know, that you all do for me. It's appreciated, but it's never going to scratch the itch that I'm looking for. Okay. So that's, that, that's not the motivation. You aren't the motivation. But when you find success and you overcome your barriers, man, that's rocket fuel for me.
when when you're honest with me and I can track because I, I, I don't know all of you, but I have about a dozen of you on Twitter that are pretty consistent with you know posting things to me or whatever. Some of you, not among these dozen, but some of you always simply post where you did it right. And you've never said anything about how it was hard for you about that particular day when I even I've said this, this day was hard. Uh, that to me indicates that you're sugarcoating and you're looking for outward, well, approval. That's not what you want to be doing either. You're, you're inviting something that helps you feel like you're wearing a Band-Aid on a blister on the back of your heel. Because in the privacy, you're really doing damage to yourself. And when you get something that worked, you're coming out and showing. Basically what they accuse me of, the people that don't like me, let's say, oh, he's cherry picking. This is, I, I, I outlined yesterday what the ES was going to do and it delivered it. So I only operated in what you saw. And I showed you a day before trade with the bond markets. That way you can know it's the same account. It wasn't just a reset type thing. So anyway, I, I saw a lot of you asking about bonds. I'll talk about bonds you know, in the in the fall, right before we get to uh, November. But um, one market's enough. And to answer the folks that are asking about crypto, does my stuff work in crypto? I don't know. I have students that swear by it. I've never traded crypto in my life. I have no intentions of ever trading crypto. So there's that. So we, uh, I answered that for you that if you've been waiting this long to hear it, I should have said it in the beginning, but I wanted to get to that story about I was getting held up at uh, in South Carolina. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Like, I, I don't know. Like that, that was a, it was a wild, wild event, but be careful. Be careful in what you're doing in the market, but really be careful in public now. Don't walk around watching your phone and don't be flashing, you know, money or doing things and don't go shopping by yourself ladies if you're going out and you're, you're spending money you're, you're buying stuff you don't know if you're being watched followed back to your home you know it, it, it's it really has opened my eyes up to the potential for things to happen to people that are not being prepared and we're going to just get more and more of that over the summer i think it's going to get wild so what's the point of working so hard doing this and finding an extra stream of income if you can find it and then just fall victim to someone else because you weren't paying attention. You have to be responsible. Respect the level of risk that's in the world right now. Just because we're in the United States doesn't mean bad stuff can't happen to where you live in your neighborhood, right? So anyway, got that off my chest. I feel better now. I feel clean. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't bore you too much, but uh, you have to, you have to, Know when to stop and be comfortable with it. And if you feel like you're not able to find your way, everything you're trying to do doesn't seem to be working, don't force it. Take a week off. Simply just unplug. Don't even watch my videos. Don't watch my Twitter space or Twitter, what's it called? Twitter feed or whatever. Don't even look at my tweets. Okay. Deactivate notifications. That way you can't be enticed to look at what's going on. And take a week off. The markets are not going to change. The algorithms are not going to stop working. It, it's not going to stop working. Either. It's going to be there when you come back. But what's different is you're going to come back with a fresh perspective. You come in. It's like a car after being washed. It just looks good. Feels good to be in it. And yesterday, you know, I knew what I was looking for. I knew what to expect. I saw it, and there it was. Notice the difference between that and two weeks ago on that Monday and Tuesday. I was just giving you levels I wanted to see price gravitate towards versus yesterday, where I mapped it out, showed you chart. That, that's, this, that's different. That's different. That's knowing what you want to see happen in price because everything is indicating it's likely to do that versus, okay, we're looking for a draw on the liquidity right now. That's tape reading. It's an understanding of getting a feel for where we're at, building a narrative versus knowing what the narrative is and saying, here's what it's going to do, and this is what I want to see happen. That means if I get what I need in terms of an entry, I'm in it. I got in it, fatigued, wanted to get through it faster because I was tired. I regretted actually um, putting the trade on. 
So I say to myself, do I just let my limit order go and go to sleep? Because <laughs> that's, what, that's what I wanted it to do. And I was thinking to myself, eh, let me just stay with it. But I don't want to, I don't want to have any more risk than I have right now. And I put the stop loss off too, too soon. And it came and hit me. But nothing changed the trade. It's just, I put it up too soon. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going right back in. So the entry criteria for those that are wondering was me simply just getting back in because the original idea that I used, which was trading old new week opening gap, and the fact that we had three sweeps below and the market likely to go higher as we traded down into that weekly uh, fair bank up I mentioned uh, a little while ago. And the likelihood of trading up into that volume and balance on the weekly chart and running out the swing high I look at my chart to make sure I give you the right day here. January 30th. So January 30th is high. I think that going forward is the next draw. And then how we work within the volume and balance between August 22nd, 2022 and August 15th, 2022's weekly candles on ES. So again, you'd find out on ESM2023 on TradingView. I think that's it. So. I've missed you all. I've missed talking to you. Uh, I have a lot of really good ideas I want to incorporate into the lectures and teachings this week. Uh, I have to do some video work so that we guys can uh, catch up, fill in the, the blanks or spaces that we had for um, April. So give you some more uh, content and some lecture points. And we're opening up a new month in May. So seasonally, you want to be studying, does the market provide, and I'll share the uh, the seasonal tendency that I'm talking about. I'll give you the actual chart. You already have it anyway. It's in the core content on my YouTube channel. But I'm going to show you why I'm referring to what I'm referring to. And we can watch it real time and see if it pans out, which will be interesting. And until I talk to you next time, I've enjoyed spending time with you today. Uh, I'll be quiet until we get into uh, Monday morning. So enjoy your weekend and be safe.